Hello mate, it's your Uncle Dave here. Bit of a different start to this one because you know how um, I often create a bit of a mess while I'm uh, working? Well, this time I'm starting with a bit of a mess. Hi Rips. Um, as you can see, I have been pulling everything out that I could find um, that might be useful for building this handheld Tesla coil. I'm gonna start with a tidy up and I find that that helps sort of making process. Look where I do the voiceover, which I'm about to do now. Hello mate, it's your voiceover Uncle Dave here. Have you ever noticed how the scientific concept of entropy can sometimes make it seem like the very fabric of the universe is conspiring to make your room untidy? I have, but that's not important right now. What's important is what I've been up to, which is looking at a new way to make an amazing handheld Tesla coil that's going to blow your socks off. It is so much nicer to start with a clean room, don't you think? I don't know, maybe you don't. So last time, got as far as making this coil. was actually quite successful, but I feel like we need to stay focused on what it is we're trying to achieve here. I want to make a handheld Tesla coil that can kind of shoot quite straight sparks. Swords, some people call them an ancient weapon, a weapon of the Jedi. Actually, not that ancient. Well, maybe to you. It was about 15 years ago that our old friend Steve Ward, remember him? He co-invented and built the first dual resonant solid state Tesla coil. Well, about 15 years ago, he invented this new technology, this new way of controlling Tesla coils, which created just this kind of nice straight spark. You feed energy into the spark uh, just right so that you get a little bit of spark growth and then that spark becomes basically the breakout point for further spark growth. You basically end up with a, you know, a three and a half foot or four foot long breakout point, which is this plasma stem. What to call this new technology? Something pithy, something snappy, something easy to remember, something that just trips off the tongue. Q C W D R S S. TC. Quite a mouthful, but a delicious one, according to my research, which has brought me here to the website of LoneOceans.com. Lone Oceans is a highly respected Tesla coiler. You can see he's made several QCW Tesla coils, but the one that I'm really interested in is QCW DRSS TC2 Tiny QCW. Because if we're going to make a handheld one, we need it to be quite small. Yeah, it looks really cool. Imagine that handheld. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? In this article, he actually doesn't discuss how he makes the control system, but I've got my own plans for designing a control system for this. But in this episode, what I'm going to concentrate on is reverse engineering the physicality, the very shape of this coil. I'm a simple man. I see something that works. I want it. I copy it. You wouldn't copy a handbag. A joke for people of my generation. You wouldn't steal a handbag. You wouldn't steal a car. You wouldn't steal a baby. Downloading films is stealing. If you do it, you will face the consequences. Man, these anti-piracy ads are getting really mean. I've already started by putting this picture into Photoshop and counting the pixels and using the few numbers that he does give about the dimensions on this, it was possible to get all of these lengths and shapes and sizes and turn them into a 3D model, which is exactly what I've done. So what we need to start with, half donut shaped thing, base for it, wire, inserts, dichloromethane, three holes, soldering irons on, just melt it in. There's one, two, three. Looking good. Three of these. Holes start off at a slant all the way through. So just enough for that to go through. If you look at Lone Ocean's method for doing this, he's made little sort of coil forms in this half donut shape. Instead of this, I did some lateral blue sky thinking outside of the box, and I calculated that if I could find some 18 gauge wire with exactly the right diameter of insulation on it, exactly 
2.8 millimeters, and wrap that onto a simple half donut shape, it should form, then everything would sort of naturally fall into place. Naturally into that perfect donut shape, using the insulation of the wire as the spacer itself. The downside is I don't know if it's going to work until the end, because if I get to the end and it hasn't done enough turns, then uh, yeah, I'm hopeful, although I haven't double checked. I'm not really a double checker. This is dichloromethane, the glue. It's not illegal to possess, but it is illegal to sell, so uh, don't ask me where I got it. It's very poisonous. Ah! <laughs> Only joking, it's not that dangerous. I'm going to start the time lapse because um, once I've started, I want to just go continuously. halfway. Very pleased with how it's going, but um, I'm going to have to take a short break because they're about to launch the uh, first ever crew on the Boeing Starliner. We've got uh, 32 seconds. That's the rocket. This is genuinely quite tense. There's never been humans on this thing. One ignition and liftoff of Starliner and Atlas V. American heroes. Dynamic pressure with the forces of That's what happens if you do too much science. I think they made it. it. Looks pretty spacey. Anyway. There's my uh, ventilation. Mm, back to this guy. I'm actually going to share this last part with you at real speed because it is among the most satisfying. It's just exactly right for the wire so it's just it's fitted. Oh it's just gone really well. Don't breathe this in. It's not good for you. Yeah look see just fits exactly. That's where it should end and it's actually going to end there. Very close. Um, I'm not worried about that at all. This base plate part is probably going to be changed out, remember, so the, the coil form, this part, that's the bit that I wanted to turn out right. And look at it! Oh! Oh! This is why we do this kind of thing, right? It's the small victories. That's actually looking quite nice! But why, in the name of all that is wiry, would you want to make your primary coil half donut shaped. I mean, look at all of these other coils from around the world that people have been making for years. Cylindrical prime, flat disc prime, conical prime, conical prime, flat disc prime, cylindrical, cylindrical, flat disc, cylindrical, flat disc, cylindrical, flat, 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 cylindrical, conical, conical, cylindrical, 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 half donut. That's the only one. And we're making it. Let's start by having a look at this amazing animation done by Arc Attack. It shows the Tesla coil in operation. On the left, a femimum of the electrostatics, and on the right, there's a femimum of the magnetic field from the primary at the bottom up the secondary to the top load. It gives you some clues as to what's going on in these high powered systems. So, the magnetic field lines on the right, they're kind of whoomp, whoomp, whooping up the coil. And on the left, you can see the voltage building up on the top of the coil, which is obviously where the breakout's going to happen. Useful for not only seeing how well the energy is sort of being passed magnetically from the primary to the secondary, but the electrostatic simulation also gives you some sort of clues as to where the maximum kind of voltage stress is building up on the surface of the top load. So you can design a Tesla coil that doesn't arc to its own secondary. So if we now go to have a look at what Lone Oceans has used the same software for, up here he's actually shown a comparison. The flat disc, traditional. Second one is cylindrical, traditional. And the third one is this half donut, very much not traditional. And so I've gone in Photoshop. This line here is the side of the secondary coil. It's the same in each one now, as you can see, because I've rescaled it. And this shows you the magnetic field strength. A hue and saturation adjustment. You can see, imagine this is the power turning up. 
There we go. So if you look at the relative levels up the coil, you can see that the half donut shaped coil pushes this yellow strength bit of magnetic field up a little bit higher so that it affects more of the coil gaining up here. Dissolving the surface of the plastic, the dichloromethane, and so it should dissolve the uh, the plastics together. Yeah, look at that. That is one inch away from the predicted ending. All right, I'm just going to hold that for a while. So it glues quite quickly, but then it gets stronger and stronger over uh, days and, and weeks. Now that's together. That should last a long time. Famous last words. Now I can put the lid back on this filthy dichloromethane. Probably don't want to watch a man hold a thing. So I'll be back when it's dry. Although I don't really think this simulation is sort of conclusive in any way. It certainly doesn't show a massive advantage, I don't think. Maybe you disagree. This to me looks like it's at least as good, if not a little bit better. It's more evenly distributed and it looks cool as flip. Look, I am so pleased with how that turned out. Look at that. That looks amazing. Conformed really nicely to the uh, half donut shape. Yeah. So pleased with that. Anyway, the entropy is hotting up nicely. Um, I've made this for when we wind the secondary. Um, I've got this uh, industrial servo motor and that hopefully will help me wind the coil because you may remember last time I used this drill, but weird black smoke started to come out of the back bit up there. That's an old fashioned kind of motor in that drill, which uses carbon brushes. I think it really damaged my drill uh, running it that slowly because of the carbon brushes. I'm going to spend, it's going to be like a couple of hours of work so that I get a nice solid winding rig. So it's worth investing now. And actually what 3D printing is really good for is making these specialist parts. I've been designing all sorts of uh, parts and things and bits and bobs that make things fit together. So that fits onto the end of the motor. See, it's got that um, sort of luggy bit on the end. See? You can see that's a live view from the printer there. Yeah, very exciting. It's just starting off. You'll probably be able to see it get sucked in in a second. A little bit of this PETG filament. There you go. Just a little bit. Goes through a hole in the wall. And then you can see the part that we're printing there. And uh, yeah, there it is. So yeah, I love, I love the bamboo printer. It's just, it's so easy. And I like having filaments there and printer there. I think I've got all my 3D printing done and I've got a 3D printing tip for you. Don't 3D print things you don't have to 3D print. Look around, see what you've got. Try and work that into it. 3D printing is so miraculous, it's easy to see it as the solution to everything. But do I need to 3D print every bit or can I use some bits that I've got lying about? A cork sanding block or a bit of wood? That's not a bit of wood, it's MDF actually. Well, it's functionally very similar, isn't it? There goes a stand for the motor, cork block on the front, the secondary coil form, putting in an insert. Nice. Right, screwing things on, screwing it on, screwing it on, screwing it on. Uh, there goes the coil. Oh, there's that uh, adapter we made that would fit onto the motor. That thing, it's that luggy thing. That's called a keyway, I found out, and a shaft key. Mm. And made it without even knowing what it was called. Massive bearing on the end, left over from a washing machine repair. That was the only one I had. Far too big for this. It could hold probably hundreds of kilograms. Screwing it on, screwing it on, and there she is. A winding rig. Push it together, and a last minute flipperoo. Check this out. Potentiometer. I can adjust the speed. You see the voltage coming out of it because it's forming a voltage divider. Can have it do whatever I want, even super slow. I've got um, a pedal off um, an electric organ. So I'm going to try and connect this to this and have both hands on the wire all the time and just slowly fill this with wire and feel nice and relaxed the entire time. Almost like it's an enjoyable hobby and not a sort of torture sent from hell. Now the part everybody loves the absolute most, which is sanding. I just love it. I can't get enough of it. I could sand all day. 
sanding's done, it's nice and smooth. It gets fed up this hole in the middle. I've got this little guy. That will align the two halves. I've got an insert that I've put some solder around the rim of. So it'll solder. Let's solder onto the insert. Good electrical connection. Poisonous as it is, it is good at its job. But can you recommend something that causes the big C? Read up on it. Tell me whether it's actually that dangerous or not. I'm uh, not entirely convinced it's quite as toxic as people 